Ugh, I left my drink. Hello and welcome back to Drinking By My Shelf. This is not wine, I know, but I am deeply hungover, so this is what I need right now. Sweet, sweet DC. Today's video is going to be an author spotlight on the author, Gillian McAllister. She has four books, I've now read them all. I think that she's brilliant, so I wanted to tell you guys about her and what she's done in her career so far. I feel like Gillian McAllister is a really good example of an author who really does get just better and better with each book. Like, if I had to rate these, I probably would go in chronological order. They've just been getting better and better. I'll delve more into that now. Let's just start the video now, I guess. <laughs> also, I literally went out and bought The Evidence Against You for this video. I just bought it this morning. I went out and got it from WH Smith, and then it started hailing, and I had not brought a coat or a bag or anything. I was wearing sunglasses. Um, and so it's now like already a little warped, you can tell, because I had to carry it back through the hail. So it's my brand new book. Whoops. Anyway, we're not getting to that one yet because I'm going chronologically. So the first book and how I discovered Jillian McAllister, this is Everything But The Truth. This is my proof copy, you can see. And if I remember right, this was about two or three years ago, I was sent this because Claire McIntosh, who is a thriller writer who I adore, had recommended it. She said that she had read a proof and that she really, really liked it. So I reached out on Twitter and requested a proof of this. And that kickstarted my enjoyment of Jillian McAllister. So the story of Everything But The Truth, this is about a woman who finds out a big secret about her boyfriend, whose child she is currently pregnant with. So they're very much like planning a life together and she discovers something from his past that he never told her. So what I loved about this book wasn't the secret, it wasn't the plot. I thought it was interesting, um, but it wasn't, I thought, like the most gripping secret ever. The reason for that is, I don't want to say too much like without revealing spoilers, I personally didn't find it as much of a kind of um, like moral dilemma because I felt like it was it was given too much justification. Because Jenny McAllister is so good at writing these characters that you that you empathize with, they were so well written, they were so, you know, complex and believable and people that you can really empathize with, and that's the same through all of these books. Jenny McAllister is really, really good at writing people that I understand as people. I empathized so much with the boyfriend, um, that I no longer was kind of going along with this moral dilemma of like, what she's supposed to do, can she trust her boyfriend, should she stay with him, should she have a child with him, this kind of dilemma, which is like what the book is really hooked on. When I was just like, oh, I mean, I, I understand what he did, I can, I can empathise, I can, you know, it, it still, it still is like a morally questionable thing that he does, but um, he's just given so much understanding that I wasn't like that hooked on the dilemma aspect of the book. And I think that as the books go on, that problem faded away for me because the later books had much more of you being stuck like what would I do in this situation. So let's move on to the next three because these three are, I think, this is where she starts to get really really good. Having just said that I would rate them in chronological order, I maybe take that back because anything you do say, which is book number two, is possibly my favourite just because that storyline like just so particularly spoke to me. This one has one of the best opening scenes of a book that I've ever read. The main character is out at a bar, there's this guy being really creepy and pushy, like we've all been there, she's out with a friend, they decide to go home and they sit, she says goodbye to her friend and then starts walking home by herself. And as she's walking, she hears footsteps behind her and she looks and sees the trainers of the man who was being creepy and pushy in the club. So she realises he's following her. And it's honestly terrifying, it's so tense. She's trying to like change direction, see if she can lose him and he's following her, getting closer and closer. And it's, I felt like genuine like fear and panic when I was reading it. And I guess this point, this isn't a spoiler because this is literally right up in the first scene. She goes down these stairs and the guy follows her and the shoes get closer and closer. And so she whirls around and pushes him as hard as she can. And from that point, the book splits. It's like sliding doors. It splits into the two possibilities. What does she do when she realizes she has pushed this man down the stairs and potentially seriously injured him? Does she call the police and stay and wait to potentially get arrested for harming him? Or does she run away? And oh, I found this book so scary and tense to read because that opening scene was so, so great that it felt like something that could have happened to me. Like it felt so relatable and that if you were in that situation, you so easily could have done the same thing. And so everything that happens to her afterwards, all of the trouble with the law that she gets into, the potential prison sentence and stuff that she might receive, all felt so terrifying because it felt like something that you could accidentally get yourself into. 
And I loved the split timeline, seeing what would have happened if she'd made each decision, because that's something people, you know, we often wonder about, like, what would have happened? How would my life be differently if I'd acted different on one day? And this is such a dramatic decision to have made. Also, I really liked the character of her boyfriend in this book. He's a character that's really stuck with me. Again, he just felt like such a real person. She's just so good at that. So this one's possibly the one I found most dramatic and most kind of felt like I was sucked into the book and it was happening to me. But let's keep going because the storylines do just keep getting even more exciting. Book number three is No Further Questions. So this one, oh my goodness, it's about sisters. Love books about sisters, Martha and Becky. And Martha leaves her young baby, I can't remember how old the baby is, um, but very young baby with Becky to babysit. And then the baby dies. And Becky is arrested for murdering the baby. So it is about what happens to these two sisters when Becky maintains that she didn't kill the baby. And Martha and Becky have always been so close and she so wants to believe her, but there are so many signs pointing to the fact that Becky might have killed this baby. And again, wow, I found myself going back and forth so much in my mind with whether or not I believed Becky and trying to figure out any other explanation because you so badly don't want to think that Becky could have done this and also seeing how the sisters can ever navigate this in their relationship because Martha doesn't straight up blame Becky or think that Becky is guilty but she just can't talk to her. She's just allowing the legal system to work it out and until then she just cannot make a decision but obviously the parents are still talking to both children so it's this whole how does the family navigate this insanely hard and tragic thing that's happened and I thought that Judy McAllister did such a good job of that like as well as being this exciting mystery story it's also this family drama essentially and last but not least the most recent book the one that I've got a little bit windswept and hailed on is The Evidence Against You and this is a brand new one it just came out and it's set on the Isle of Wight which was really exciting because that's where my parents live so I know the Isle of Wight very well this one is probably tied with anything you do say for being my favorite I was so consumed by it so many twists and turns that I was just constantly being like blown away by so this one's about a woman named Izzy who back when she was a teenager her father was put in prison for murdering her mother and he's been in prison for 18 years they've had no contact she is now still living on the Isle of Wight, running her mother's restaurant, and basically blocking that part of her life out. But then her father gets out of prison, and he comes to find her and says, I didn't kill your mother. And Izzy had never even questioned this, even though her and her father had been close. I think because it was such a shocking and traumatic thing to happen to her, and he was convicted, the second that he was convicted, she has just had that in her mind that that did happen, that her father did kill her mother. And now suddenly it's being put in her mind that he says he didn't do it and she does not know what to believe. It's genuinely quite scary this one. There are points where I felt like actually afraid because you don't know whether or not to trust the father. So there are times when you know he's showing up at Izzy's door and you never know whether or not he is a murderer. It's just really tense and you don't know if Izzy's making the right decision, opening up to him and talking to him and listening to him again. But you're so rooting for her to finally find out the answer and also finally work through the trauma of this happening because it's something that she's kind of blocked for so long. I couldn't even imagine what I would do or how I would feel but I was so with Izzy every step of the way. So let's put these back in order. Those are the four Gillian McAllister novels. I know that she is working on something new at the moment. She's always working on something. She's great to follow on Twitter because you get little insights into her writing process. All of these are great if you're looking for psychological thrillers that are very much led by the characters. Like they have these exciting plots to move the story along, but the characters are what make the book, absolutely. So even in the one that I said I was less hooked on the plot, still absolutely cared so much about the characters. They are about the characters' reactions to these situations first and foremost, as well as about the twisty mystery of working out what happened. That's almost like this fun bonus on top, but overall you are seeing real human people in extreme situations and seeing their reactions to it, which I really loved. And then also getting this amazing insight into the legal system from somebody who really, really understands it. I'm very excited to see what Julie McAllister does next. So do let me know if you have read any of these books or which one 
from my little synopses which one you thought sounded most exciting to you. And also let me know if there are any other authors you want to see author spotlights on. I'm planning to do one on Helen Oyemi and Taylor Jenkins Reid when I've finished all of their back catalogue. Um, but let me know if there's anyone else that you want me to put on my list. And do give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button below for new videos twice every week. See you next time!